You see, we live in an upside-down kingdom when we're living for our daddy. It don't say if Robert Howe behind lifted up or when Bear behind lifted up. It don't say when Curtis or Will or Faye behind lifted up. What's it say? If I be high and lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. Help me out, everybody. If I be high and lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. Raymond, I might be a little loud right now because I might get fired up here in a second. We live, if we choose to live, the way God wants us to and the way Jesus showed us in an upside-down kingdom where the least is the most favored where the last is the first, where Mary, who just sat weeping at Jesus' feet, was said, you've chosen the better thing instead of all of us who are out there just serving God. You see, religion has built in some kind of a, a service crown. It don't say that in the Word of God, by the way. Okay? We've sat in His presence today. We're going to sit in His presence as long as God lets us and he's going to always be here, right? In Jesus' name. Some of us need to shake the service orientation anxiety off of us. We, works has been so built into us by religion that we just don't know how to sit. And I find it easier for girls to understand this than guys, okay? So I'm talking to you men right now. Jesus wept. You know where that scripture is located? It's located when he was visiting with his friend Lazarus. And Lazarus had died in the natural. Been dead for quite a while. Jesus wept in that presence in that time. Men, as you are friends with other men, will you weep in the presence of another man when he is dying in the spirit? We've guarded our hearts to such an extent that We've got hard hearts, but Isaiah said, I'll take your hard heart, and I'll, I'll take your heart of stone, and I'll give you a heart of flesh. It's like the walls of Jericho are built up around our heart. They were not built up around Jesus' heart as he wept the sweat drops of blood. Now, I can talk to you all day about these activities, but it's, it's not about our behavior. It's about receiving from him, and there are many things that cloud that from happening, and you're walking in it. Now look, over this last 21 days, we've been learning about what a fasted life looks like and how to live like that. We've been fasting in the flesh of the TV and of the computer and of the cell phone and of the food. That's great and everything. But sometimes we're just trying to tame our flesh. The only reason we tame our flesh is so that our spirit can rise and the Holy Ghost can come and communicate fully in through us in Jesus' name. Now we live in an upside-down kingdom. Jesus' first words to his disciples as he gathered them at the Sermon on the Mount was this. Blessed, happy, prosperous, loved. Blessed are the poor in spirit. I don't mean the people of poverty. It means people with the broken heart. Broken heart for Jesus. Broken heart for our friends. People who have abandoned all of the way that society says we're supposed to live. You become poor in spirit. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. There's a conviction coming on this house right now about mercy. There's a conviction of humility coming upon this house in Jesus' name. And it's spreading from one person to another. I, I, I see it having ripple effects in Jesus' name in households as a spouse says to another spouse, I want us to do it Jesus' way. Okay, honey. We'll do it Jesus' way. We hold hands and we pray through those things. And the lines of communication are being separated. All the walls are falling down in families in Jesus' name. Blessed are the merciful. If we can't have mercy upon the people that, 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 that are right there in our household, how are we going to have mercy upon a stranger? Or maybe it's easier for us to have mercy upon a stranger, but we come in after serving the Lord, and we just expect our dinner to be hot and ready right there. And I don't like these English peas. Why'd you cook them for me? Where's the grace, man? Where's the mercy in the household? Where's the looking in each other's eyes and feeling each other's pains? Blessed are the merciful. Keep being prideful and see if you get a blessing. See if you get the blessing of the, of the presence of God. 
Blessed are the pure in heart. No convoluted, no trashed heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, man. Let's, let's pray. I want you to put your hand on your heart. I did this at Shade Tree yesterday, and I believe God gave us a lot of breakthrough. Now, in your hand, you hold your heart, a representation of your emotions and the motivations that you live in. That's what the heart is. The source from very deep within us, generationally, an emptiness, an abandonment, a, a regret, sin, shame, guilt, or freedom. Blessed are the pure in heart. If you don't have a pure heart today, I didn't come to preach to you and try and make you smarter and impress you with some scripture. We came so God could do his thing in your heart, man. And rip the stones out of it, man, and make it pure once and for all. Golden, man. Like the babbling brook that, 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 that Jesus thirsted after in the wilderness. He got baptized and the Holy Ghost came and landed upon him because he was so merciful and so generous and so compassionate and so kind and so, so ready to receive his father that the Holy Ghost came in the form of a dove and landed on him and never left. And that Holy Spirit didn't lead him out to save the nations, did he? It led him into the wilderness. And when we have a fasted life and we live a fasted life and our lifestyle priorities change and they get turned upside down, we begin to live in the upside down kingdom. Our heart breaks and all of a sudden we're poor in spirit. How about if you came to work Monday and you just kind of hugged your boss that gripes at you all the time. You said, I'm going to do whatever you ask me to do. And I'm sorry if I haven't done that before. And all the attitude drops off. Don't come here and praise the Lord with a bad attitude against somebody. Unforgiveness. Lord, make us pure in heart because the scripture says, and we don't want to pass by this as if it's accidentally going to happen. It has to happen intentionally. God wants to purify your heart. Will you let him? Because as your heart is pure, not convoluted by religion or somebody's attitude or somebody's pain that they put on you, Blessed are the pure in heart, for you will see God. Be in the very presence of him. Heaven hasn't closed. It's open for us. Jesus lives in you. Jesus is seated at the right hand of God, and he's in heaven, and you're right there with him. We live in an upside-down kingdom where the priorities of this world have no power over us. Politics have no power over us. Love has power over us. Amen. When Jesus began his ministry, he came into the temple. And he saw people that were religious promoting themselves. He saw people who judged each other. saw people making money off of Jesus saw people that fasted like this ceremonially they just came and and and, and they just acted like they were all that and he came to bring an upside down kingdom you see all the people that read the old scriptures of old that said there was going to be a new kingdom coming they thought it was going to be politics. Jesus for president, right? Nothing like that. Jesus for being the last, the one that took our pain, the one that went to the cross. Some of us hadn't taken that seriously, have we? We've acted like Jesus' grace was always going to be there. There's going to be a day of reckoning, my friends. There's going to be a day, and I pray it's today for you. When Jesus walks into your life and he turns over the table. Unless you want to be broken anew, it will not happen. Everything else is just a big fluffy religious story. Jesus is not a story. 
He's a man that came in the flesh like this. But his father was with him. But he was having to make those decisions. Don't give me no story about I just made some bad choices. What you did was chose the devil. What you did was chose yourself. I want to show you in this. I'm going to close with this. In Isaiah 58, I'm going to show you what a fasted life looks like right here. We've been working through this, Isaiah 58. It's been our primary scripture through the fasted season. But some of you ain't fasted. Some of you, it's business as usual. Some of you still hasn't, haven't loved your wife like you need to. Men, some of you still got secrets on your telephone. If you can't live a, a, a life of holiness, how are you going to live a life fasted for Jesus? God, when I was praying this morning, and we had a prayer time, I began to see the Ark of the Covenant, and I began to see how holy that thing is. Because it represents Emmanuel. It represents Jehovah. He's living in that thing. His power is in that thing. Well, he, he began to talk to me about that being a form of the temple just like you are his temple. You are his temple. When Jesus came into this thing and he turned this over in the synagogue, he was really talking to your temple too. He was saying to your temple, I don't want any money changing, any debauchery, any hell, any sin, any lies, any religion going on inside your temple. It's got to go today in Jesus' name. So I can't go forward unless you want to be pure in heart. Here's what many of you, I've seen it right now. Many of you have got an excuse for it. And here's what it is. I was hurt when I was a kid. My daddy treated me this way, okay? Uh, somebody died prematurely in my life before they did. And you know what? You're never going to be pure in heart if you're mad at God over that. Because the devil came to kill, steal, and destroy. And God came to bring life and life abundantly. And if you don't understand that that's the order of the kingdom, we're all thrown off. Yeah. <laughs> Isaiah 58, beginning in verse 5. And Isaiah is being a little sarcastic here, Samson. Is this such a fast as this what I have chosen? A day for a man to humble himself. A day. Oh, I gave you a day. I fasted today. Take my picture, put it on Facebook. Is this such a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to humble himself with sorrow in his soul? See, that sorrow right there is a worldly sorrow. Oh, I feel so sorry for myself because I don't get any Oreos today. I feel so sorry for myself because somebody was mean to me. Don't, doesn't impress the Lord God very much, okay? Is it only to bow down his head like a reed and make sackcloth, see this is on the outside, and make sackcloth and ashes as a bed, pretending to have a repentant heart? The pure heart is a repentant heart. The pure heart is the heart that can't watch an R-rated movie, can't hear cussing, can't hear some garbage on the radio, can't walk outside in unholiness. You know what? Everybody gets holy when I walk up to them. I notice that. Oh, Brother Allen. Hey, man, what's that on your breath today? <laughs> Cough syrup. <laughs> There's a reason God chose an old convict to be your preacher, by the way. <laughs> it's an upside-down kingdom. Do you understand what I'm saying? He chose the foolish, like those old redneck, all right? This broken redneck, by the way. Do you call this a fast, a day pleasing to the Lord? Rather, is this not the fast which I choose to undo the bonds of wickedness? All of the testimony here today, the, the Muslims getting baptized and, and people welcoming uh, uh, Jen over there and saying, this is our family, this is our wife, this is our bride, that's our big boy Austin right there, it's my brother forever. That's a bond. So if you got a bond and you walk up to somebody and they're bound, break the wickedness off of them. 
I want to tell you that there's a four-letter word that does it. Do you know what it is? What's the word? That's it. It's not me preaching or you giving them a lecture or sending them a bunch of scriptures on Facebook. No. Love them, man. People don't know how to love because they've never received love. Today, you're giving it to them. You're pouring it out. So, so he's, he is commissioning us to break the bonds of wickedness. Well, did you receive that commissioning? Amen. Ain't going to happen when you're just sitting at home watching days of our lives. <laughs> Rather, is this the not, not the fast that I choose to undo the bonds of wickedness, to tear to pieces the ropes and the yokes of the oppressed? These are the demons that have tried to get a hold of people that don't have to stay for another second in Jesus' name. Some of us have been so co comforted by the demonic inside of us that we just nuzzle up and we sleep with them. And, and we say, oh, I'm going to hang on to this depression. I'll just sleep 14 hours today. This is how I'm going to do, okay? Oh, it makes me comforted, okay? Break the yoke today in Jesus' name and let the sun rise out of you because you're the light. Next week I'm preaching about the light. You are the light. And break apart every last enslaving yoke. Verse 7. Is it not to divide your bread with the hungry? You see, the bread of life is Jesus, right? So we easily say, hey, didn't I cook a Jesus burger? Some people are going to be in line, and I pray this isn't true, and I'm not prophesying this, but, 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 but maybe people that don't have their priorities right, they're going to be in line before Jesus, and he's going to say, uh, what, what's up with you, dude? And, and, and he's not going to say it like that. But then, then you're gonna, he's going to say, didn't you see me making all those Jesus burgers? The bread that we're to share with the hungry is the everlasting bread of life. It's the life. It's your testimony that overcomes. It's the blood of Jesus. That's the bread. Is it not to divide your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into the house? That's me sleeping in my truck. Thanks for welcoming me into the house, guys. In Jesus' name. When you see the naked, you'll cover them and not hide yourself from the needs of your own flesh and blood. See, when it says naked, it's just not talking about a physical nakedness. We're talking about a spiritually exposed person. They're just out there so vulnerable, like the prostitute walking the street. I just want to give them a hug and, and tell them, you know what, we got love for you. But the rebellion is on them in this place, and they're so naked, and that's all that they know, but not anymore. God's going to change all of East Texas. He's going to break every yoke because God's commissioning it to us. And if we take this serious, we begin to live a fasted life. It's saying these old priorities of my life don't have any power over me anymore. I have a new set of priorities right here. I'm going to break my bread. I'm going to find the naked people and cover them with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Would you walk in that with me in Jesus' name? Verse 8, and we'll close with this. I need the prayer team to come. Give me some help, boys. Clean this mess out of here. Get it out of God's house in Jesus' name. Get it out. Get it out. Get it out. Get this table out of here. Get this coins out of here. Get them out in Jesus' name. I need the prayer team to come. I need the praise team to come on in Jesus' name. Whew. Let the legs fall off. We'll put them back on. I don't want that here. Bring, put it over there if you don't mind. Excuse me for being bossy. I didn't mean to do that. Just put it over there. Okay. Thank you, man. Give these guys a hand in Jesus' name. That's exactly right. Somebody has got to clean up the messes of people's lives that have been perverted by religion, that have been hurt by the church, that have been uh, torn down by their parents, and haven't been lifted up, have been judged in their life. Somebody's got to clean it up. That is us in Jesus' name. We're releasing, we're breaking the yokes off of them in Jesus' name. Yeah, Hallelujah. Last verse right here. Go ahead and set the lights, my friend. Lane, thank you for doing a wonderful job with, 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 with Raymond there in Jesus' name. Somebody say, Then. So everybody say then. then. I know what y'all are thinking. Then I'll go eat some breakfast. <laughs> Thanks for being real, big boy. Guy just got baptized yesterday. Look at that guy. Give him my hand right there. Yeah, everybody stay here through the invitation now. It's, we're going to let the Lord move, and then we're going to get moving on our break, breaking our fast. And, and let me just say this. You're not ready to live a fasted life if you can't even stay through the invitation. I'm not chunking no rocks at you. I'm just asking you to examine that in your life. 
God wants you to have a patience that will just allow you to sit in his presence, okay? As a matter of fact, I want to come in Jesus' name against our impatience about uh, our schedule in Jesus' name. And get on Jesus' schedule. And I, forgive me if I'm a little bit too forward there, but I, I love you so much. I just ask that you would, we would all let the Lord work on our hearts right now. Let's everybody stand up together. I'm going to read this last verse, and then you come. We've got, we got counselors in the middle. We've got counselors here at the front. We've got yoke breakers. You know what? There's some yoke breakers sitting right beside you in Jesus' name. Ready to pray with you and see you get victory right now. This last verse says this. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't everybody raise their hands up right now? We're going to read it together. Then Amen. your light, your light. Will, break will break out like the dawn. Like the dawn. Give the Lord a hand on that right there. Keep your hand up. Some of you have been living in darkness so long, you need to be the light. You are the light. And your healing, <laughs> restoration, restoration, new life, new life. Will, quickly will quickly spring forth. Your righteousness, your righteousness will, go you, you. will go before you, leading you to peace. Leading you to peace. You to peace. Look at your neighbor and say, he's leading you to peace. You One more sentence. And not hide yourself. From the flesh and blood needs of your own family. Don't say, I just went to church today, honey, when he's laid up watching the Pro Bowl. Give him a kiss and get him a tuna fish sandwich. All right? Let me pray. God's moving. In Jesus' name, we love you. We need